Well, good morning and welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you who've subscribed, who've liked, who've commented, um, and who are here today. So today, this video has pretty much been uh, inspired by a lot of the work that I've been working with my clients. And as you know, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and I trained under Marissa Peer in 2017 and that led me onto an incredible journey and to pretty much the job I have now. The last 18 months, almost two years, has been a very tough and rough journey for a lot of people. So this video comes into a completely different realm of what I normally do, but I just wanted to really reiterate some of the issues that a lot of people are facing, even the ones who are not talking about it. There are a lot of people out there who need your help, who need my help. And um, it comes down to choices. And so the essence of this whole video is, when are we going to respect other people's choices? When are we going to respect that everybody is different? There's seven billion people on the planet. There's seven billion different points of view. There's seven billion different belief systems that each and every individual human being has. We are a program of, we are a product of our programming. And just to touch on a couple of little things. So the, I think the, the question is, is why aren't people respecting other people's choices? And I you know what I'm gonna go into and it's always been like, I'm not gonna talk about these topics and stuff, but this is what has been in the last maybe 12 months, such a big issue for people. People are suffering more anxiety, they are suffering more depression, they are suffering hopelessness and helplessness. They are feeling that there is no hope left in this world because everybody has become a follower in a sense. That they lost their individual thought, they thought they lost their individual characters because everything was all about a magic word, COVID. And with all the mandates and all the I, I guess what they're saying is, and this is what and this is what a lot of people are worried about. They're worried about mandates that will become law that will become a regular part of life and they want that freedom that they had pre-COVID. Now I'm not here to rain on anybody's parade, I'm usually the most optimistic person but we will never go back to life as we knew it pre-COVID and there are a lot of factors as to why. We have to stop trying to live in that past. We were almost like naive and and carefree and then COVID hit and all of a sudden um, it was like a ton of bricks falling on everybody. But the truth is, is that we're all really resilient. We've all lived through it. And let me rephrase that. The majority of us lived through it. Now, I don't know about you, but there are a lot of people we've lost along the way. We've lost a lot of people to COVID. We lost a lot of people to depression. We've lost a lot of people to anxiety. And we've lost a lot of people who've, lo who've actually lost hope. And they did lose hope. We're talking about elderly. We're talking about the youth. We're talking about the middle-aged. We're talking about even people in their 30s. We've forgotten the people who suicided along, this la along these last two years. The people who suicided because they actually felt they had no support. The people who suicided because they felt they had, there was no hope left in this world. The people who suicided because they had, no, they didn't get the compassion that they needed from someone. Just a smile can make the biggest impact on someone's life. Right at a crucial moment when they just needed it to save their life. With all the stuff that's happening in the world, I'm here to tell you now that we need to figure out when enough is enough. We need to figure out when is it okay to discriminate against people who've chosen, chosen willingly, 
consciously to not get a vaccine. We have to also realize that the people who are vaccinated, that is their choice. That is completely their choice. Just like it is our choice what we eat, what, we, what makeup we put on, how we do our makeup, whether we get tattoos, body piercing, whether we cut our hair, shave our hair, we do different things to our bodies. We do different things in our lives. Every single person is an individual. What I found a lot of my clients came here was mainly anxiety and depression. So when my clients come to me, it used to be completely different a year and a half ago. It was usually weight loss, smoking, self-sabotaging, you know, getting rid of certain habits. Now it's about depression and anxiety. I know Marissa Peer always talks about not being enough, and that is so true. That is the fundamental core reason of a lot of our belief systems and why we self-sabotage. But since COVID, a lot of them feel that they're not heard. They're not given a choice. Not that they're not enough, they're not given a choice. And they feel like they are helpless and they're just lost in an ocean where they are unacknowledged. They're not acknowledged, they're just lost. They're lost at sea without a sail. They feel like they are not in control of their lives. And they feel like other people are trying to control them. And it's not just governments, it's not the pharmaceuticals, it's not just the media, it is their families, it is their friends, it is their workplaces, it's their bosses and their colleagues and people that they just meet. I have seen this with the people I've worked with in the last you know, year now, that this is the major trend. And these are people who come with concerns. These are people who come with questions and they just want to feel that they are accepted exactly as they are and that their choices are respected. Now, I've done a couple of Zoom sessions with people in Victoria, and as you know, I am from Melbourne originally. My mother is still down there. I haven't seen her since Christmas. But what I'm trying to establish here is that people are hurting, and they're hurting because people don't recognize them as a human being. They don't recognize them as having rights. They don't recognize them as having emotions. And they do feel we're a, hum we're, we're, we're a spiritual being having a human experience. Bob Proctor says that all the time. But we are, regardless of your religion, regardless of your background, regardless of anything that's happening in the world, right? We are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are all connected. We all feel the fear. We all feel the uncertainty. We all feel exactly as every other person does. What this whole video was about was to give people that breathing space to make a decision or to respect their decision. It's to not divorce someone because they don't want to get a vaccine or they're divorcing someone because they want to get a vaccine. It's not throwing your children out of the house because they refuse to get a vaccine. I have had that, believe it or not. There are, there are parents out there who are willing to throw their children out of the house if they don't get a vaccine and they've been giving an ultimatum. Uh, so we've all, I've also had spouses who are arguing with each other because one of them is really pro-vaccine and the other one is anti-vaccine. And I hate saying those labels, it's not because they're pro or anti, it's because one's reacting out of fear and one's reacting out of non-fear. I do know, because I went through this stage myself, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was periods where I was like, maybe I've got it all wrong. Maybe there is no hope. Maybe there is no, there's no out to this. But that's the whole point of resilience. The resilience is, is not allowing, you know, with all my training, you think I would have like clicked onto it. It took me about two weeks because I went through a stage where I was like really questioning a lot of things. But resilience is all about having all the information and still making a informed choice. And the truth is, that why people are protesting, why people are against it, is because they feel that their values are not aligned with, say, an injection. Their values are not aligned with a government mandate. Their values are not aligned with people who um, they feel are lying to them. And when there is no trust there and the trust is broken, then they are going to resist. They're going to resist and make their own informed choices. And that is perfectly fine because they're not reacting out of fear. Now, I also understand 
that people are fearful. I've had a friend who said that the only reason why she got vaccinated was because her family physician said, you will die if you don't get the vaccine. So she actually panicked and went and vaccinated the whole family. And that was on some doctor's words. And sometimes you've got to realize when you need to filter out what is true and what is not true. And yes, people can die of COVID, just like people have died of the influenza virus before COVID came along. And hundreds of thousands of people died pre-2020 due to influenza virus. Millions of people die of cancer every year. Hundreds of thousands of people die of cardiovascular disease. And hundreds of thousands of people die of obesity. But we don't look at that as a pandemic. So there's a lot of things to rationalise. This is what has been coming out. People are questioning, well, there's this, we have an obesity problem. Why aren't we targeting that? We have a cardiovascular problem and a cancer problem. We have hundreds of thousands of people who are coming, who've got autoimmune. Why aren't we targeting that? That is, that is bigger than COVID. And that's a good question. Why aren't we targeting that? Why aren't we targeting health as the main concern? I do understand that when COVID hit, it changed everybody's lives. It changed our perception of our safety net. So when we feel that we don't have a safe harbor, when we feel that we are prisoners in our home with all these lockdowns, we start to get depressed. We start to get anxiety. We will do whatever it takes to feel that safety again, to feel what it was like to wake up every day and look forward to going to work. Having, having the life that we've had up until then. And COVID threw the spanner in the works. The lockdowns, should I say, really threw the spanner in the works. And the lockdowns really created a huge mental health issue. And I see it even here in Queensland, but I see it with my clients who I do on Zoom from Victoria and New South Wales. Remember this, is it fair to punish someone for making a choice? And is it fair to discriminate because someone has been vaccinated or they've been unvaccinated. I think that we really need to look at why we are discriminating, why we think it's okay to discriminate, why it's okay to do that to people who have, one, worked all their lives, two, made this country as great as it is, three, they're tax-paying citizens, four, they're voting citizens, and yet we're discriminating against them and saying, you don't have the same rights as someone who's been vaccinated. Who is the oppressor here? Who is, I'm gonna say it, who's the bully here? That is just blatant bullying. If you don't do this, you get punished. You don't get the same rights as every other citizen. And this, doesn't, this isn't just for Australia, this is worldwide. My question is, when is enough enough? When is it okay to segregate people? I thought slavery was abolished. That was what one comment one of my clients said. I thought slavery was abolished, but it seems it hasn't. It's come in a different form. I do understand exactly where that person was coming from because they were in a job that they absolutely loved for 20 plus years, and yet their work requirement was to be vaccinated. And they were tossing up whether, do I get a vaccine that I don't believe in, that I choose not to have, and for the, for the reasons that they had, or do I just shut up, suck it up, and just take it, even though I don't feel comfortable doing that. They felt like they were pushed into a corner. And this is what I wanted to say. The reason why people protest is also because they are pushed into a corner. They're pushed into a corner and they are retaliating. And to be honest, they are not troublemakers. They want to be heard. People who protest have a reason to protest. And that reason may not align with your values, but it really aligns with their values. And this is where I'm saying is that we all have a difference of opinion. We all have a different belief. We all grew up in different cultures, in different households with different religions. And we grew up 
on the poor side of the tracks or the extremely rich side of the tracks. We may be born into royalty or celebrities, or we could be the poorest person in a third world country. It makes no difference what your race is, what your skin color is, and what your religion is. The truth is we are all human beings. We all are a spiritual being. We all feel and we need to realize that when someone makes that choice, we need to respect it. And that is all my clients have ever asked, is that someone respects their choice, that they respect their points of view, and just to leave it as that. Just like they said, like one client early this year said to me, you know, nobody asks me who I voted for. Why do they ask me whether I've been vaccinated or not? Good point. Nobody asks whether I had an abortion or not. Why are they asking whether I was vaccinated or not? Very controversial. Why would you ask someone such a personal question? This is a medical issue and it actually isn't any government's right to impose that on anyone. It's not a government's right to impose medical laws on people. It is not their right. Because if it is, all the obesity would be dealt with overnight people would have the best medical care, surgery, and everything else that comes with obesity, and we would have dealt with that problem completely overnight. So it doesn't make sense. So this is purely all the information I've gathered in the last 18 months, and the comments that have stuck with me, and it's so true. Why do we force a medical directive on human beings? It's not like we're incapable of making a decision. Who's the authority over your body? Who is the authority over your mind? Only you. And this is why it is so important to self-empower people and tell them it is okay to have your unique point of view. It is okay to have your belief. And it is okay to say what you really wanna to say to people and not feel that there is going to be a backlash. And it's not just about health. It's about people making their own decisions and choices. Because the truth is, I agree, no government or pharmaceutical has the right to control your medical history, your medical life. No, no government has the right to say to you, you have to have this for your health and for the health of the other people. And at the same time, really neglect all the other health issues that are happening around the world. And in that country, obesity, cancer, autoimmune, um, heart disease. How many more are there? Because if you did, you'd fix all those issues too, not just an influenza virus. It's just using a little bit of common sense and trying to steer away from the fear. And if you want to tip what a lot of my clients have done in the last 18 months, 90% of the people I have seen have literally switched off their TV and they do not watch the news. They do not watch anything on media. They steer away also from social media. A lot of my clients don't even know I have a YouTube channel. They don't know about it. I don't advertise it either. So they have actually switched off. They said it was for their peace of mind because they felt that this was bombarding them. And you and I know that to create a habit and for people who have bought into the fear, which we all did, I'm not saying I wasn't exempt from it. I even got that I bought into it. When you're watching the same negativity, when you're watching, um, say, the same film over and over again, you know every single line that's coming up. You know every single scene. It's, it's embedded now into your subconscious. Sometimes you'll be in a position where you're in a cafe and something happens and or you hear the music of this particular movie and you remember the words. It's like this playback in your, in your mind. It's because it's in your subconscious. You've, you've watched this so many times, it's created a habit. It's embedded, it's created a new neural pathway. That's the movie you remember. Now, when you're watching television every single day since COVID, because I know a lot of people did, now that everybody's glued to their especially the first six months, everybody was really glued to their TV sets. What happened is that they literally hypnotized you. They hypnotized you and then they created this belief system. And the belief system is that without an injection, you're not safe. And I get it because it is exactly how I had to rationalize and filter out what is my belief. I had to st 
stop and look at and do self-reflection and go, what is my belief and do I let that in? As someone who's been doing hypnotherapy for four years and I'm conscious of a lot of things, I know when to switch things off. Now the reason is, is that I don't normally watch TV, but if it's on and I hear something, I switch it off. I don't want that to be embedded into my subconscious. So it is a conscious choice and it's really hard when 99% of the people don't get that they have been programmed. They don't get that that television, that the news and the media have actually installed a new program into your subconscious. Because once it's in the subconscious, it's really hard to get it out. You don't know why you're reacting. I know people who were the most incredible human beings pre-COVID and then after COVID when they got vaccinated, they became literally totally different characters. Now they have no compassion and they pointing the finger and blaming people who are protesting. They're blaming also unvaccinated people for this whole issue of COVID. It's almost ridiculously funny, but it's not. And so that's what I'm saying. The television, the media, the government, pharmaceuticals, whoever you want to blame, whoever you want to point the finger at, the whole thing is a collective. They have literally conditioned people to be from being a character to having a belief to having this belief now that without an injection you're not safe and people who haven't been injected you're the problem but you and i know that's not the problem you and i know that by segregating separating and discriminating against people is not fixing an issue it is not fixing the problem. Melbourne's had over a year and a half of lockdowns. It has not fixed the problem. Sydney had four months of lockdowns. It has not fixed the problem. And that's when my clients ask me, when is enough enough? How, how is it that it's okay with my family to hate me and not talk to me because I refuse a vaccine? Why is it okay that I have to get something that I don't believe in, get an injection because I just wanna keep my job and have a pay packet. I'm not walking away from that. I spent 25 years in this job. And then you've got the people who, uh, who have walked away. The people who said enough's enough, time out. I'm not doing this bullshit anymore. And it's not that the unvaccinated people who've walked away from pay packets have more integrity. I'm not saying that because let me tell you, I know, I know the majority of people who've been vaccinated got vaccinated because out of one was fear and out of two was for their jobs and out of three, they had a belief that the government was right. You need to be vaccinated for everything. So that's not, I'm not discriminating and saying that that was the bad choice. Everybody has made a choice and you've got to live with it and you've got to respect it. This was the whole thing of my video. And the whole thing is, is that you need to be aware of what you're letting in. When you are constantly watching stuff on replay, when you're watching it on a daily basis, you are imprinting into your subconscious mind. And so if you can be programmed in a year and a half to really have this belief system, this new belief system, then guess what? You can reprogram yourself to have any belief system. You can reprogram yourself to have, have wealth. You can reprogram yourself to have health and success. You can reprogram yourself to have everything that you've ever dreamed of. And so this is the crux of this video. The message is, is that be aware of everything you are watching and take everything with a grain of salt. If it doesn't align with your values, switch it off. Read a book, find something that inspires you and do the things that make you happy. Don't do things mindlessly. Do things that make you feel good. Even if the world is falling apart on the outside, I'm telling you now, never let that bullshit in. You know, letting that media, letting the comments, letting your bosses, letting mandates, letting, you know, governments and letting all these all this noise in, that creates the chaos inside you. Your 
external world has has to be separate from your internal world. You have to find the time and place to really connect with yourself as a human being. Um, I will do um, a meditation, probably my next video would be a meditation where you can connect with your inner self and really calm yourself down. And I think that's really important in a time of need, in a time of crisis, in a time when you just need to just decompress and just let it all out. And you don't realize that because you've got so much pent up emotions that are just stuck and we want to release those emotions before they get to become toxic. So we want to release all the anger and resentment. Let's release it. Remember the saying, no news is good news? It's probably true. No news is good news. And then at the end of the day, you know what? You choose to allow what you want to infiltrate into your mind. You choose to allow what belief systems get programmed into you. If you've seen my videos, you know thoughts are real things. They have a vibrational energy and I know people don't get it. It's taken me 25 years to get it. I was like, no, they don't. They don't have a vibrational energy. I don't know what you're talking about. You can't manifest something out of a thought. I didn't get it. But what it is, is that thoughts have the power to make you feel good or make you feel bad. So if you want to empower yourself, switch off the TV. It's a reason why when TVs first came into Australia, they used to be called the idiot box. I think right up until the 70s, they were called the idiot box. And that's because a television was called a television program. That wasn't labeled by mistake, a television program, because I think they knew back then that a television can program you so easily. It is the best way of hypnosis. It is constant, repetitive, same information over and over and over and over and over again. And that's what creates a belief and a habit. And with that, my loves, I'm gonna leave you to it. You make your own decision up. Write your comments below. It's good to see people's opinions and I love you from the bottom of my heart whether you're vaccinated or you're not I don't give a shit I don't care where you're from what color you are what religion you are I love you deeply and profoundly love you